Hello and welcome to my presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Kamil Grondes. Uh, let me start with introducing myself. Uh, I'm a software engineer uh, at Samsung. Uh, I used to be an engineer like you, then I took a job as an evangelist. Uh, so you should basically know what evangelists are doing since today's keynotes. Uh, I programmed in many languages, but the JavaScript is my favorite one. Uh, I also have uh, had an adventure with Android and some other embedded systems. Uh, mostly I do a software for mobile and for wearables. And I'm from Poland. Uh, I don't know if you know Adam Małysz, but it was very popular in my country. So once I've created a game called Skyjumper, I use Box2D Web, since it was the game written in HTML5. And today, I will be talking about Tizen. I will show you how easy you can enable your game for Tizen platform. And I'm also here to invite you to our booth. So come to us. We can talk more. So let me start with some description of Tizen platform itself. My friend once told me that there are usually four things that people can remember from the presentation, so I will keep it short. First of all, Tizen is an open source platform. Uh, it's uh, open source. You can contribute your code into the platform. And what is, it's basically like Linux. But what is different? Uh, Tizen was tailored to support various types of device. I mean many types of device, starting from camera, ending on TVs. It's basically like one system to roll the, all the devices. The project itself is hosted by Linux Foundation. So there are many parties who are contributing to Tizen. Mainly it's Samsung. And uh, there are a few guys in suits who are governing the whole project. They are setting some direction for Tizen. They are called themselves technical steering group. So what about devices that are currently supporting Tizen? Uh, the first one you may not be aware of, I'm talking about mobiles, since they are available in India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. But the other one, you should know because they are available global, I mean wearables and TVs. And there are also other devices that support Tizen. And uh, the one which is quite interesting is Connected Auto. You can connect this device into your OBD port in your car. You can put a SIM card inside, and you can create a software to you know, provide some information to the user, get some feedback from the car, stuff like that. OK, so let me move into presentation of Tizen Store. So till the end of this year, uh, we are not taking any revenue from you. Everything is just for you. There is no any validation fee, registration fee. You can get it for free. We provide you a professional testing for your app. And because half of it is done automatically, the other half is done by the real, real, uh, real testers. So we need three-ish business days to finish the tests and send you a feedback. Of course, we are protecting your apps. The apps are signed. The apps are encrypted. Uh, you need to create your certificate. We will sign your certificate. We will make sure that no one will get your app uh, who you don't want to have this app. And uh, for Tizen, you can create an app using C and C++, but also you can use HTML5 and JavaScript. So uh, we support also web applications. 
And yeah, if you have a pay, PayPal account, uh, we, can, we can send you money over, over this account. What about else? Uh, so we have enough patches, as everyone has. Uh, we, uh, we also uh, supporting subscription uh, model inside in-app purchases. We are also providing beta tests, so you can select up to 1,000 users, share them a link to your app, and they can test it. You can also generate some discount coupons. Uh, for instance, you can use some social network services to promote your app and, and spread those coupons. Uh, of course, you can change a price and uh, we also support some, some different uh, payment methods. Of course, credit cards are supported. In-app billing is also supported. But in many countries, uh, users uh, using some, some, for example, prepaid card or stuff like that, we support many of them. OK, so how to create an app using Unity? and enabling it for Tizen. Basically, you need to follow these four steps, like creating a project in our IDE, creating a certificate, uh, creating certificate request, and uh, then you can switch to Unity 3D and set up the environment, and you are ready to launch an app on Tizen. So I don't trust demo gods, so my friend made some movies for you. These steps is how to create a new Tizen project. It's straightforward. However, the native uh, project is not visible at the beginning, so you need to click the other. You need to select the Tizen native project, click Next, and click a Finish button. Oh, there are many templates. You can pick the default one, the basic UI project, and you are ready to click Finish. So the project will be generated. You will see it inside Project Explorer. Uh, you can check the location of the project, since it will be necessary in further steps. Oh, this is the Eclipse, so it's suggesting to switch the perspective to more C perspective rather than HTML5. But if you are some console ninja, we also provide command line interface so you can create the project just by using a console. OK, this is the location of the project. Uh, it will be necessary in the next step. OK, creating a certificate. Uh, since we are protecting your apps, we are securing them also by signing the apps. So uh, the idea is that you can pick up to 10 different devices, get their unique number, create device profile inside the certificate, and your app can be only launched by these devices. So no one else can, can use it. To create this certificate, you need to find this little blue button, register a certificate. The rest is easy. Uh, you can decide between mobile or TV. You need to pick some name for your profile. And uh, yeah, this is the your name, your password. You are ready to request, uh, to request Samsung to sign your certificate. So you also need a Samsung account. And yeah, if you, if you already have one, just put your email, your password, and the certificate will be signed by, by Samsung. The next step is to create this uh, device profile. So I have one device connected to my IDE. I can add its uh, device unique identifier. And uh, I also need to type the password from the previous step, and I'm ready to qu click Request. Yeah, and uh, the device profile will be also sent to Samsung website to be signed. OK, let's move into Unity. So this is the easiest step. You just need to 
a switch platform to Tizen. And there are a few settings that you need to uh, fill. So in settings for Tizen, yeah, in publishing settings, you need to put the name of your profile. It was Camille. And you can, s you can also set up other settings. One is bundle identifier. It's the package name. And you need to pick up a version number. And the rest is uh, quite similar to other platforms. You can choose uh, some default orientation. You can decide about the icon of your app and splash image. OK. So that was quite easy. Here is a manual how to do this. So if you want to take a picture of this slide, this is the URL that you, you may want to uh, visit. And uh, I would also like to invite you to developer.tizen.org website. Here is the URL for the Tizen store. My name is Kamil Grondis. You can find me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Gmail, actually, whatever you like. And I strongly invite you to our booth. We will be here for the rest of the event. OK. Let's have a talk. Do you have any questions? Yes, please. So it's a hard question because we have many devices. And uh, speaking about mobile, I saw some press release saying that 3 million devices has been sold. So, uh, and it was sold just in India. And uh, for the wearables and for the TVs, I don't know the numbers. However, my friends who are selling apps inside uh, the store they are quite happy from the results. Capabilities of the devices. So mobiles are like mobiles, they support uh, different sensors. There is nothing unique uh, there. Uh, the wearables are, qui are quite interesting because uh, they are having some additional sensors like heart rate monitor. They are also having some better efficiency in a matter of battery usage, of a matter of uh, working in background. and. Uh, what else? A uh, few of our devices has this uh, ER, uh, like infrared uh, emitter. So you can uh, use APIs just to uh, change a channel in TV or do something more. Uh, what else? Uh, yes, it works like. Uh, on Android, like inside manifest file, you just select features that you request from users. So the user will be aware that, for example, you want internet connectivity or access to some sensors. And do you have more questions? Excuse, excuse me? Uh, in in app advertising. No, no, there is no in app ad advertisement for Tizen Mobile. However, for example, when you are using Unity, you can use uh, whatever Unity supports. Of course, you can also may try to find some app publisher made some um, unique advertisement for for him put it inside the app. Any other questions?
basically the wearables is quite a fresh market. There are not no many apps. There are still some gaps. Uh, you can imagine what you can do with something that the user always has on its wrist. You can sh show some discrete notification to the user. It's also a different input device. Uh, for example, this Gear S2 has this rotating bezel. You can try to make some different uh, interaction with the user. Uh, and because it's on the wrist, you can also detect some gestures. Uh, our devices support not only HTML5, but also CC++. So it's good for some uh, gesture detection. Uh, you can write a piece of code in C, it almost no drain battery or processor. You can detect very sophisticated gestures. Uh, it's, it's sometimes good, for example, in fitness applications. So measuring some pull-ups, push-ups, whatever user is doing. You, uh, as a game developer, you can add some some quests, for example, do 10 push-ups or squats or whatever, and, and make some more interaction with, with the user. OK, do you have some more questions? Yes. Yes, so speaking about emulators, uh, the IDE itself uh, provides emulator. However, I would also like to recommend uh, a service called Remote Test Lab. It is accessible from developer.samsung.com website. So we have plenty of real devices connected to our servers in different locations. And through the website, you can connect to this device. Uh, you can see whatever is displaying on the screen. You can install your app. You can even do SDB port forwarding. Uh, so you can connect it to your IDE. And you can, you can test your app even on real device. It's quite amazing because there are many various devices. So it's easiest way to see how your app looks on different screen resolution, different screen density. And there are also Tizen devices. There are also wearables. And I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell it, but TVs are also coming to RTL. OK. What do you mean by adding? Hmm, I've never tried. However, however, Unity is uh, building a package, and this package is installed. It's one package. Hmm, I'm not sure. However, Unity is very plugin intensive, so I think there is a way to also include some some platform specific code. Of course, applications can communicate each other, like sending intents on Android. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure with Unity. But come to our booth, I will check it, and, and tomorrow I will have an answer. OK, do you have some more questions? OK, so thank you very much for coming. Uh, please come to our booth. Thank you very much, and, and see you later.